All right, in number 10, we're starting in number 10, we're going to do a little more difficult probability problems. We're going to have to rely on our ability to count like we did in the previous chapter. In number 10, it says at a given conference, there are nine women and 11 men in attendance. So the first thing I'm going to do way over here is draw a box of my entire sample space, so to speak, where we have nine women and 11 men, which means we have 20 total in the group, 20. The organizer randomly selects three attendees to sit on the stage. Now, it doesn't say and line them up in seat number one, seat number two, and seat number three. Just put, you know, grab three of these people and put them up on the stage in any order. Order doesn't matter. Find the probability that exactly two women and one man are chosen. And then it asks, is this a combination or a permutation problem? Since we're not seating the uh, men and women on the stage in an order, it's just going to be a combination problem. Order does not matter. So let's compute the denominator first. We know our answer is going to be a fraction. How many possible outcomes are there when you have 20 people in a room and you need the organizer randomly selects three of them to go sit on the stage? How many ways could you choose three people out of a group of 20? Well, let's not simplify it yet, but this is the answer. Out of the whole group of 20 people, there are 20 choose three ways to choose three people. We haven't computed what that number is yet. And then on the numerator, we need to figure out how many of those possibilities satisfy what we're looking for. In other words, how many ways, how many ways can we choose two W's and one M? All we need to do is, this is like doing two tasks. First, select two women. Second, select one man. Multiply those two numbers together, and that is the numerator of this problem. How many ways can you choose two women? Well, there are nine women to choose from. How many ways can you choose two of those nine? Nine choose two. And then we multiply that by uh, choosing one out of the group of 11 is 11 choose one, which we already memorized what that is. 11 choose one is just how many ways can you choose one person out of a group of 11, and that's 11 ways to do it. So let's see, let's, uh, let me, just for good practice, let's work out these numbers. C92 is 9 factorial over 7 factorial, 2 factorial. Do you remember that? The 9 means you get 9 factorial on top. And on the bottom, you go 9 minus 2, 7 factorial, and then 2 factorial. And remember, these two numbers will always add up to the numerator. 7 and 2 are 9. And if you cancel the 9 factorial, with the 7 factorial, you're going to end up with just 9 times 8 on top. Remember, because that's times 7 factorial, 7 down to 1. But we cancel that 7 factorial with the 7 factorial in the denominator. Oh, maybe I'll write it down like that once. 9 factorial is 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Because 9 is 9 factorial is 9876543281 all multiplied together. This would be 9876543281 all multiplied together. 2 factorial is just the number 2 times 7 factorial. I just reversed those two. And I'm going to cancel the 7 factorials. So that gives us 9 times 8 over 2. And the 8 and the 2 cancel, leaving me a 4 upstairs, leaves me with 36. <clears throat> 
11 choose 1 is just 11. I'll go ahead and write that down. You can plug it into the formula to convince yourself. And then 20 choose 3, that'll probably be the toughest one. Let's see what we get here. 20 choose 3 is 20 factorial over 17 factorial, 3 factorial. The 17 came from 20 minus 3, and then that 3 just came from that 3. And if you cancel out the 17 factorial with the 20 factorial, it's going to leave you with a 20 times 19 times 18. 20 times 19 times 18 over a 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2. I'll leave off the times 1. Oh, I should have written it as 6 because notice that 3 times 2 on the bottom is 6, and 6 times 3 is 18. So when I cancel the 18 and the 6, I get a 3 upstairs. Now let's see, 19 times 3 is 57, double 57, and we get 114. So 57, yeah, so that looks like it's 1140. Hopefully that's right without using a calculator. <laughs> so what we are looking for is this. And we've already computed this, this, and this, or simplified it. So we are going to get for our final answer, 9 choose 2, which is 36, times 11 choose 1, which is 11, over 1140. And I know that 30, 36 times 11 is 396 over 1140. And I'm not going to reduce it. That's, that's fine. They're both even, so I know I could at least divide them both by 2. So that's less than 50%, um, but uh, actually less than 40%. The probability of choosing exactly two women and one man. Okay, number 11. The company has six men and eight women officers. All right, so if I were to draw a picture, I could put something like six women and, oops, it's six men. I'll make it eight women up there. Eight women, six men. <clears throat> at a meeting, exactly seven officers cho chosen at random are seated in the front row in seats that are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Order matters here. Use permutations to find the, pro the following probabilities. The officers are arranged with men in seats 1 through 3 and the women in seats 4 through 7. So that means I've got, I'm going to draw a picture. Those are the seven seats. If you want to number them, you can. Seats 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't want to put more numbers on to confuse it. But the left one is seat 1, the right one is seat 7. Okay, so out of this group, we have to choose seven people to sit over here. We need to find the probability that the officers are arranged with men in seats one through three and women in seats four through seven. So these will be men, these will be women. Since it's a probability, we need a, it, the answer is going to be a fraction. Once we count up the number of ways that we can seat the three men followed by four women, that's going to be the numerator. That's the number of ways it can happen. But the denominator is going to be the total possible number of ways that you could seat these 14 people in those seven seats. Okay? We're looking for a probability, and the seven officers are chosen at random and put along 
the, these chairs, from these seats from one through seven. So what's the probability, what's the number of ways that you could choose seven people from this group and line them up in these sets? Well, that's a permutation problem. That's an ordering problem. And I'm not even gonna use the permutation formula. Um, uh, let's see, what should we do first? Let's do the denominator first, it's nice and easy. We've got 14 people in the group. How many ways could we possibly seat them in the seven seats? Well, how many do you have? How many choices do you have for the first one? 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So the denominator is 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8. Another way of saying that is how many ways could seven of these people, yeah, out of the 14, line up for a Coke machine? Well, here's the line. You could have any one of the 14 here, in any one of the remaining 13 there, and then 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Now, how many ways could we have a man, 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 woman, 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 woman? Okay, so I need three men in a row, but there are only six men to choose from. So how many do I have possibly that could sit in the first seat? Six. Then five. Then four. And now we has to be a woman, 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 woman. Well, we have eight women. So any one of the eight could be there. Then the remaining seven, remaining six, and remaining five. So the answer is without simplifying or reducing at all, that. Now we could do a lot of canceling here. Um, I think maybe I'll just let you do that or you could plug it into a calculator and get the approximate answer written as a decimal. But you can see the bottom is going to be a much bigger number than the top is but they both have seven digits being multiplied together or seven numbers being multiplied together. Okay, so think about that. As we move on to the next related problem, B and C are related to this. We want to know now what is the probability that the officers are arranged with men in the odd numbered seats and women in the even numbered seats. Okay, we're still seating seven people randomly. Seven officers are chosen at random and just lined up in the seats, one through seven. So it's random. What's the probability that the officers are arranged with men in the odd-numbered seats and women in the even-numbered seats? We'll assume we start with seat number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we start with an odd seat. <clears throat> Well, still, the denominator is the total number of ways you could possibly seat seven of these people in the seven seats. Seven of these 14, and then line them up. Well, the denominator is going to be exactly the same as the previous one. This, again, it's the number of ways that you could take seven of the people from that group of 14 and line them up. All right, now we need to ca just count up how many different ways could we put men in odd-numbered seats and women in even-numbered seats. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll say the odd numbers are, oops, those. The first one is the first, that's odd, three, five, and seven. So I have to have men in the odd numbered seats. How many men do we have? Six men. So if men have to be in the odd numbered seats, I could choose any one of the six for that seat. And here's odd. Any five for that seat any four for that seat, and any three for that seat. Now I need to sit the women in these three seats, the even-numbered seats. How many ways could we do that? 
Well, there are eight women to choose from. So eight, seven, six. So I'm going to put this. This is the number of ways that we could arrange the men in the odd numbered seats and women in the even numbered seats. Now remember, they're all, that numbers, they're all multiplied together. 6 times 8 times 5 times 7 times 4 times 6 times 3. And once again, I could cancel all of that out, but I'll let you do that, and I'll let you plug it into your calculator to find out what that is. But once again, notice that the denominators numbers are much greater than the ones on the top, so we'll have a small fraction there. All right, well, one more to go. What's the probability that the men are seated together and the women are seated together as well? Well, I already know that the denominator is going to be the total number of ways that I could seat these 14 people, that choose seven of them and, and align them in seats one through seven. The denominator is going to be the same. total number of ways you could seat seven people in seats one through seven from a group of 14 that you're choosing from. The numerator is simply going to be the number of ways that you could get. Remember this, we've done one like this before. Man, men, men. Woman, 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 woman. That's the men seated together and the women seated together. But there is one other way you could do it. It's this, or women, 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 woman, man, man, man. So that or means we're going to have to add up this number and this number for the total number of ways that you can seat the, the men together and the women together, because there's two different ways to do it, women, men, or men, women. So the numbers are going to look real familiar. The men, there are six men and eight women. So how many ways could we do this? Six times five times four. And there are eight women. So how many ways can we do this? Eight, seven, six, five. And you might remember what's going to happen when I do the next one, the plus. The women, how many ways can I seat them in these four seats? Eight, seven, six, five. Times, how many ways can I seat the three men? Well, there are six men. So six times five times four. Well, that should look familiar, a little messy there. This 654 matches this 654, and this 8765 matches this 8765. So the numbers are the same. When you multiply this out, you're going to get the same number as this number, this one here. So basically, it's like 2 times this. Maybe I'll write it like that. 2 times, instead of adding the two, the two equal numbers together, I'll say 2 times. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 6 times 5 times 4. And that is the probability. Once again, I'll let you cancel that out and multiply, uh, plug it into your calculator, and you'll see that you get a fairly small fraction or a small percentage or small probability.